Yes. Very good morning, my dear friends. <coughs> Today's good morning, sir. Resource person, Dr. A. Kavita Madam Garu, Assistant Professor, Department of Botany, RBVR Women's College, Autonomous Hyderabad. Madam is going to explain uh, in Bryophyta, especially uh, uh, moss plants. That is a polytrichum. Madam will go into explain today's class. Madam, please welcome and uh, share your screen and start your session. Welcome, Madam. Okay, sir. Thank you. Right. Good morning, all the participants. Now, today we are going to start with polytrichum, the last two type study of your degree syllabus. And just I'm start sharing my screen. Yeah, I hope this is clear. I'll just to make it as a slide. Yeah. So can you see the slide? Yes, yes, madam. Right. Uh, so we'll just move on. Uh, just I'll show you the here. Right. So this is the uh, polytrichum plant, a moss plant. Okay, we call it as a moss plant. Now, so polytrichum, it is an another genus of the bryophytes, which are commonly called as hair cap moss or hair moss. Now, what is this? Uh, you can look into this here. The plant body is having the hair-like structures which are coming out or projecting out here. So hence we call it as a hair mass. Right. So I'll I'll go that into the detail now. So first we look into the classification. So it comes under the class Bryopsida. So as I told you that uh, the division Bryophyta is divided into three classes. Okay. So this is the third class and the advanced class of Bryophyta, which is called as Bryopsida. Now, these are the plants which are completely evolved out of the water and they are completely terrestrial. And these plants are uh, named as the miniature plants of the plant kingdom. Miniature. That means these are the very small, minute plants. Okay, very, very small and minute, which is going to consist of small leaf-like structures, uh, a stem-like structure, and the root-like structures. Okay, we call them as rhizoids, phylloid, and calloid. Okay, they're not true stem, they're not true root, they're not true roots, but still, they appear like that. So, hence, they are considered to be as a miniature of the plant kingdom, and they are commonly called as club mosses, or moss plant. Now, next, this polytrichum comes under the order, included under the order polytrichales, family polytrichaceae, and the genus polytrichum. Now, we're moving on to the habitat, that is where this plant is distributed and how is the plant structure. So, there are almost 100 species of polytrichum till now dis discovered, and they are all, and they're almost distributed all over the world. And among this 100 species, there are 60 species which are available in our Indian origin. And they always occur in the temperate and the tropical regions of the world. And uh, they always prefer, this polytrichum, they always prefer the moist and the shady places. Now, and these are completely terrestrial, just now I told you, and they are attached and uh, growing in the dry rocky and the marshy places that is wherever there is the presence of moisture in that places we can see the occurrence of this polytrichum and in the indian region that in the high altitudes of the himalayan regions four species of this polytrichum were discovered one is polytrichum juniperinum polytrichum densiforium polytrichum xanthophyllum and xan uh, polytrichum arpinum these are the four species which are available in the higher altitudes of our Himalayan regions. Now, so when we observe the external morphology, uh, so just now I, I have shown you the picture here. 
So this is the structure of a polytrichum plant. So you can look into this. This is the lowermost part of the plant having the root-like structures called as rhizoids. And in the central, you can see this uh, stem-like uh, origin, the central main axis. And these are the green uh, leaf-like structures coming out of this. And this is the sporophytic generation, the so-called sporophyte. Now, so polytrichum, it is uh, uh, just like uh, the other bryophytes here also we can see two generations. The first generation is gametophyte and the second generation is a sporophytic generation. And within the gametophyte also, we come across two stages in the life cycle. One is called as a temporary protonema stage. And the second stage is the adult gametophore or the gametophyte stage. Okay, within the gametophyte, these are the two stages we can come across. One is the juvenile stage that is called as the protonema. Juvenile, that means the young plant developed from the spore that we call it as the protonema or a juvenile stage of the gametophyte. The adult, we call it as a gametophore or we can it all as a gametophyte. Now, so now we talk about the gametophyte here, the adult plant, which is an erect plant, erect leafy shoot. That means whereas the anthocyros and the marchensia, we described them as prostrate plant. Prostrate. What does it mean? Prostrate is, it is not coming above the ground surface. The plant or the thallus is growing along the substratum. That condition we call it as prostrate condition. But whereas this polytrichum, it is emerging out. That is, it is growing standing straight erect on the uh, substratum. Okay, hence we call it as the erect leafy shoot. And this gametophyte, it is comprising of two parts again. The lowermost part which is represented as underground rhizome and the erect part it is representing as a leafy shoot. So if you observe here the structure, just now I told you, this is the brown color one, whatever you can see here. This is the underground rhizome part and this is the erect leafy shoot. So these are the two stages of the gametophyte underground rhizome and the erect leafy shoot. Now when we talk about the underground rhizome, so this underground rhizome, it is a horizontally growing portion. Horizontally growing. Okay, that means it is deeply seated. It will be inside the substratum, just like our root system of the plant. The root system, it is underground. Okay, it won't come out. It will be underground growing internally into the uh, earth crust. Even here this also, the rhizome is a horizontally growing underground portion of the gametophyte. And from this rhizome, the rhizoids arise from the base of this rhizome. Now, what are these rhizoids? These are root-like structures. They are long and multicellular and branched structures. They appear just like the roots. And the cells here, as I mentioned, it is a multicellular. They come, uh, the cells of these rhizoids comprising of septa and all these rhizoids, they interwoven to form a wick-like structure. That means all these uh, long filaments, they will be wind up with one another and forming just like a wick. So these rhizoids, they help in absorption of water and the nutrients from the substratum, just playing the role of a root-like structures of the higher plants. So this is regarding the rhizome, the underground part of the gametophyte. Now we are moving on to the, the upper leafy origin, the erect leafy
midrib in the center and each leaf it is going to have two parts that is the leaf uh, the leaf base and the distal limb so just i'll show you here the structure of the leaf so this is the leaf a leaf base and this is a long leaf lamina or we are calling it as a blade so this is the ts of the leaf you can see here the central are the uh, photosynthetic filaments where the, this is the mesophyll tissue rather to say where all the cells are arranged longitudinally and uh, forming the photosynthetic lamellae performing the photosynthesis and this is the terminal cells and these are the lower most parenchymal cells storing the food material and this is the lower epidermal region right so two part which is a leaf uh, sheeting leaf base and the distal limb now when we are going for the uh, structure of the anthridium so in the polytrichum we can see the presence of the anthridial uh, so so this is the plant gametophyte here so this is a rhizome having the rhizoids now so one peculiar character regarding the polytrichum is the plant it is dioecious polytrichum is a dioecious dioecious in the sense male plant is different from the female plant so here when we talk about a male plant the tip of this leafy origin. So this is a leafy, uh, erect leafy shoot, right? Now, so the terminal part of this uh, leafy shoot here, the these are called as the fertile leaves or the fertile shoot, we call it as, where all the leaves are arranged in the form of a cluster. Cluster in what is cluster here? A group of leaves, okay, forming like a uh, a group or a cluster, okay. So the in this cluster we call it as a fertile cluster. Why we are calling it as a fertile cluster? Because the origin or the terminal part of this they enclose the anthridium. That is the reproductive organs. So it can be the anthridium or it can be the archegonium, whatever it may be. The terminal shoot or the terminal part of this leafy shoot is enclosing the respective reproductive organs. So we call them as the cluster of the reproductive organs. Okay. So the male plant, if this male plant here, the this leafy cluster, they are enclosing the male reproductive organ. We call it as anthridium. Hence, this cluster is called as anthridial head. I, I repeat this once again. This terminal cluster, which is enclosing in the male plant, I'm repeating this once again. In this male plant, the terminal cluster of these leaves, which are enclosing the anthridium, this part is called as anthridial head. Okay. Uh, unlike this, in the female plant, unlike this, in the female plant, if this cluster is enclosing the archegonium, then we call it as archegonial head. Okay. So, the gametophytic plants which are enclosing the respective reproductive organs, the so-called anthridia and archegonia, they are developed in a flower-like structures, in a roseate-like structure. So when we observe here under the microscope, the terminal position, it appears just like a flower. It is not a flower, but all the leaves are in the form of a ring or in the form of a uh, rosette or flower-like structure. So that we call it as the head region. 
Okay. So if it is enclosing the antheridia, we call it as antheridial head. And if it is enclosing the archegonia in the female plant, we call it as archegonial cluster or we call it as the archegonial head. So if we observe here in this uh, antheridial head, so all these are the leaves, the fertile leaves. Okay. And these leaves are called as perichetial leaves. Okay. The leaves which are enclosing the reproductive organs, we call them as perichetial leaves. It is same in case of antheridium and it is same in case of archegonium also. The leaves, the fertile leaves which are storing the, uh, sorry, which are covering or giving protection to the reproductive organs, we call them as perichetial leaves. Okay. Now, so in this antheridial cluster or in this antheridia, we can see the development of the male reproductive organs called as the antheridia. You can look into this. These are the antheridia. Okay. So around six to eight antheridia are developed within a single antheridial head. And you can look into the structure of this antheridia. Here they are globose structure having this basal stalk like structure. And this is a globose head surrounded by a single layer of jacket. And internally you can see this is the androcyte mother cell or the uh, gametophytic tissue which will metamorphosize and results in the formation of the male gamete, what we call them as anthrozoids. And uh, along with these antheridia, we can see the presence of the sterile structures which are represented as paraphysis. These are the long linear uh, filamentous structures Okay, which are giving protection to these antheridia and they are also providing moisture to these developing antheridia. So these are called as paraphysis. Why we are calling them as sterile? Because they are, they are not at all taking part. So they are not involved in any reproduction. So hence they consider to be as this sterile. But they are play a role of giving protection to the developing antheridia and at the same time they are supplying the moisture to the antheridia for the dispersal of anthrozoids. So this is regarding the structure of the antheridial head or this is called as the antheridial cluster. Now, so when we talk about the anthrozoids here, these anthrozoids are spirally coiled. You can observe here. These are the spirally coiled anthrozoids which are biflagellated. And this is a male gamete. And so when we talk about the female gamete, just like uh, the antheridial head, even the head of the or the terminal part of the female plant, we call it as archegonial head. So in this archegonial head, we can see the development of archegonia. So just like here also, uh, the leaves, perichetial leaves, they are surrounding the archegonia along with the paraphysis. So the archegonia, which is a flask shaped structure having the globose venter and a long neck and having enclosing the female gamete called as the egg. So this is regarding the... Uh, reproduction point of view in the polytrichum. So just I'm stop sharing and I'll share one more uh, PPT here of this next generation, what we call it as the sporophyte. I hope you can all see the screen here. Yeah, ma'am. Right. Now, when this anthrozoid, just I make it as a slideshow. Right. Now, when the antherozoids from the antheridial head, 
they are dis when they are released into the environment they will reach the female plant and they will enter into the venter and they will fuse with the eggs and results in the zygote so with that the gametophytic generation of the polytrichum will end now after the fertilization the zygote will develop into the next generation of the plant body that we call it as a sporophyte and now this is sporophyte here is attached to the gametophyte okay so uh, this is sporophyte it is a very complicated and uh, a peculiar structure here we can see in the polytrichum so just a bit later yeah one second so one second no I got it. Okay, fine. We'll continue now. So there, yes, madam. Uh, yes, madam. Yeah. So there's uh, the sporophyte of the polytrichum. Uh, it is divided into three parts. One is the foot, seta, and the capsule. And as I told you, this polytrichum, it is an advanced genera of the bryophyte. Why? Because there are certain special characteristic features. It is the sporophyte here, it is a well developed and it is independent. It is not it is not dependent on the gametophyte. It is dependent on gametophyte only for attachment. But for food material and all that, the sporophyte can prepare on its own. So this is a complete independent sporophyte, unlike Marcantia and the Anthocyros. In Marcantia, the sporophyte was dependent on the gametophyte, whereas in Anthocyros, it was partially dependent. But when we come to the polytrichum, it is completely independent. Okay, right. So, we, uh, we're looking to this uh, part. The first part, the basal part of the sporophyte, which is considered to be as the foot region. So, this foot, it is deeply buried in the tissue of the gametophyte. Okay. So, we can't see the foot region here as it is embedded in the gametophytic tissue. And this is helpful for absorptive in function. That means it will absorb the moisture from the gametophyte and help in the supply. Now, the second part of the uh, sporophyte, it is the CETA region. Now, CETA, uh, in the diagrammatic representation, I told you uh, how there is a long uh, filament-like structure here, which is several inches long. That is the CETA region. The CETA is several inches long, lying in the air. It is attached to the gametophyte, but it will be lying in the air. So it is going to carry the capsule at the another end. So one end of the seta will be the foot and another end of the seta will be the capsule. Okay. Now the role of the seta is it will conduct the water and the food material for the, from the gametophyte to the developing capsule. So this is the structure of the capsule. Capsule is a well-developed structure here in the sporophyte of polytrichum. Whereas in the anthocyros and in the gametophyte, it is only represented by the sporogenous tissue. But the capsule region of this polytrichum, it is well-developed. It is represented 
for the structure of this capsule, it will be just like a jug. The water jug, what we utilize for storing the water. The shape of that will be same just like that. It will be like a jug. Okay. Enclosing the sporogenous tissue. So when we look into the structure of the capsule. So the upper part of the capsule here. Okay, I'll just, uh, right. So this capsule region, it is divided into the three important parts. One is called as epophysis. Second part of the capsule is called as the theca region. And the third part is we call it as the operculum. Right, so this is the epophysis region, the basal part of the capsule. We call this part as the epophysis. The middle part of the capsule, this complete part, we call it as the theca region. And this is the upper lid-like region, we call it as the operculum. I repeat this once again. The capsule, which is a well-developed part in the polytrichum, divided into three regions. The lowermost uh, region, we call it as the epophysis. The middle fertile part, we call it as the theca, T-H-E-C-A, theca, and the lid part of this capsule, we call it as the operculum. Now, epophysis, so this is the lowermost part of the capsule. It is continuous with the theta. It is in the form of a swollen ring-like structure at the base, and the cells are very thin-walled and they are green in color and loosely arranged. This part of the capsule is considered to be as the main photosynthetic region of the capsule part. So look into this here. This is the epophysis. E part and E part varaku. It is the epophysis. It is in continuous with the Sita region. Okay. Mana sporophyte sita, long sita on the other, this is a continuous part. So this is in the form of a, a bulge, a swollen part of the capsule. This is a swollen part having the internal photosynthetic region, a thin walled parenchymatous region, which is green in color, having the chloroplast and preparing the food material. Okay. So remember, this can be the one of the important point in your competitive exam. Which part of the capsule is the photosynthetic part of the region? So what will be the answer? I repeat the question. Which part of the capsule is the photosynthetic region in polytrichum? What will be the answer? You can respond. What will be the answer? Operculum, madam. Epophysis, madam. It is epophysis. epophysis. It is not operculum. Ah, epophysis. Because of okay. um, photosynthetic region of the cup. It is a epophysis. It is not a peculum. Okay. I told you now. Epophysis. Here it is the main photosynthetic region of the capsule. Because it consists of loosely arranged parenchymata cells. Which will prepare the food material. Food material. Okay. Right. Now we are moving on to the second part of the capsule. Which is called as the theca region. Okay, so it is the middle part of the capsule. Okay, and it is four lobed. The its wall it is several layered. The outermost wall we call it as the epidermis, and there are trabecular air spaces which are present inside this wall layer, and they consist of filaments which are thin walled, elongated cells which consist of chloroplast, and Outer spore sac wall is present to the other outer trabecular spaces. So just I'll show you here the structure. 
this is the central theca part i told you that this is the fertile part of the capsule why i am calling it as the fertile part because in this part only we can see the presence of two spore sac so you can see here you can see the pointer here i'm i'm just showing i'm pointing here this is one spore sac this is a another spore sac spore why we are calling it as a spore sac because sac contains the okay, bag lanti structure the bag which is enclosing the spores which will develop the spores okay so here you can look into this this is a spore sac this one is a spore sac clear so this theca region it is surrounded by this is the outer epidermal region outer epidermis antamo below to the outer epidermis this is the capsule wall layer this is a capsule wall layer below to the capsule wall layer you can see here these are called as trabeculae ikkada meeku y shaped structures unnaya v or y shaped structures these are called as trabeculae and what is the important point of this trabeculae here trabeculae trabeculae are the outer wall of the spore sac these are the outer wall layer of the spore sac which are helping in giving protection to the spore sac not to get damage they function like uh, these trabeculae they function like shock absorbers okay so manaki bikes ki kaani vetkana shock absorbers untai so uh, why because ee capsule anedi this will uh, this will be lying in the air okay theca ki uh, sorry sita ki oka pakkana ee capsule untundi where this capsule is lying in the air so wind gali veechinapudalla the capsule will be moving here moving in the air it will be just uh, moving according to the wind so eppudaithe ee capsule it is moving in the air there is an every chance for this spore sac to get damage okay it is very very thin surrounded by a very thin spore wall there is an every chance for that spore wall or this spore sac to rupture okay so these trabeculae which are enclosing on either side of this spore sac spore sac ki it vai pat vai ga unnai chudandi trabeculae so they act like a shock absorber ante they are giving protection to the spore sac whatever the current wind current epudaina vachinappudu ee shock absorbers will ee trabeculae they will absorb that and they will protect the spore sac not to get any damage so that is the main function of the trabeculae here in the theca region okay so theca will always enclose two spore sacs on either side of the spore sac you can see the presence of the trabecular a spaces or the trabeculae which will help in giving protection to the developing spore sac and in the center of this uh, uh, theca region right from the sita right from this epophysis you can see the central part what we call it as columella or we call it as columellar strand so this columella it is a multi layered okay and this helps in conducting the food and the uh, water from the gametophytic tissue to the sporophyte and from the sporophyte to the base of the gametophyte okay it, it just act like a conducting tissue a conducting strand for supplying the water and the mineral nutrition so that is the role of the central solid columella so regarding the theca the questions may be asked like this okay what are the structures which are protecting the spore sac in the theca region so what will be the answer 
what are the protective structures of the spore sac in the theca region of the polytrichum capsule? Yes, now we are very good. That the answer is trabeculae. Yes, very good. Now, what is the tissue of the capsule region helping in conducting the water and the food material? What will be the answer? Columella. Columella. Columella is the region which is going to conduct the water and the food material. So, here in the epophysis region, the food material will be prepared. This food material should be supplied to this upper part of the capsule. So, how is that supplied? To this columen. Okay. So, the water from the gametophyte, it has to be supplied to the tip of this capsule. How that is supplied? To this central columella region. So, it acts like the conducting strand. Okay. So, this is about the apophysis. And the central part, what we call it as the theca region. And in the spore sac, we can see the presence of the sporogenous tissue, what we call it as sporogenous cells, which are fertile and they will develop the spores after the reproduction division, that is after the meiotic division. Now, next to the third part of the capsule, the most important part of the capsule, which is called as the operculum. Now, this operculum, it is a conical structure. It is acting just like a lid of a jug. So, manik jug ki lid untun kada. So, this operculum, it acts just like that. Now, so this operculum, it is surrounded by a sterile tissue, what we call it as calipra. So, this forms a hairy structure. So, a calipra, so it doesn't matter. This is a calipra. Okay. Now, this region, it is, it is hairy region. So, that is the reason why polytrichum is uh, often commonly called as hair moss. And it is surrounded by certain small hair-like structures. So, and it is commonly called as hair moss. Hairy moss. Hair moss. Now, uh, so, there will be a constriction here between the operculum and the theca. So, that constriction here is called as a rim or the diaphragm. So, this is called as the rim or the diaphragm. A constriction. This is the theca region ki, the operculum region ki, ekada. A notch laga. Illa oka otinatuga untanikada. This part is called as the rim or the diaphragm. This is considered as the attachment part of the operculum to the theca region. Now, now so the columella part okay, uh, of the theca is continuous with the operculum. So this columella, it is not restricted only to the theca. It will extend even further to the operculum also. Now, so in the, uh, about the, this operculum, whatever we talk about, this operculum, it will expand at the typical region, at the upper region, just like a fan-shaped structure. And the margin part of this, we call it as epi epiphragm. So, the margin of this epiphragm is having to consist of a rim, a thick rim-like structure, what we call it as peristome. So, this peristome, so this is called as the peristome. Eopaculum anedi, as we go proceed at the, uh, the part, it is broader. It is broad, a okay, fan-shaped structure laga untundi. At the base of this, it is going to consist of a peristome. Okay. So, this peristome here, it is consisting of some rigid teeth. We call them as the peristomial teeth. Now, this peristomial teeth, it is useful for attachment. It helps in giving a strong attachment of the operculum to the theca. So, manaki jagga pai no ka lid 
ఆ లిడ్ అనేది ఇట్ షుడ్ ప్రాపర్లీ ఫిక్స్ టు ద బేసల్ జెడ్ అదర్వైజ్ ఇట్ విల్ బి వెరీ లూజ్ ఓకే సో అది ప్రాపర్ గా ఫిక్స్ అవ్వడానికి మనకు ఒక రింగ్ లాంటి స్ట్రక్చర్ ఉంటుంది ఆ లిడ్ కి సో సేమ్ వే హియర్ ఆల్సో ఈ ఎపోక్యులం ఈ ఒపోక్యులం లో ఈ పెరిస్టోమ్ అనేది ఇట్ యాక్స్ లైక్ ఏ ఏ ఫర్మ్ అటాచ్మెంట్ టు ద ఫీకా రీజియన్ ఆర్ టు ద క్యాప్స్యూల్ సో దాట్ వీ కాల్ ఇట్ యాజ్ అ పెరిస్టోమియల్ టీత్ సో దేర్ ఆర్ సో దీస్ పెరిస్టోమియల్ టీత్ దే ఆర్ ప్రెసెంట్ ఇన్ టూ రోస్ ఓకే దిస్ ఇస్ అ ఫస్ట్ రో అండ్ దిస్ ఇస్ అ బేసల్ రో సో దేర్ ఆర్ అరౌండ్ 32 peristomial teeth this is a very important point please remember here this is oftenly asked in the competitive exam the number of peristomial teeth in the operculum part of the capsule their number is 32 32 they are arranged in two rows 16 in the upper row and the 16 in the lower row okay so two rows they are arranged in the two rows in the operculum and this operculum the ring of this uh, uh, peristomial teeth this rim and the shape of this operculum plays a role just like a lid okay so this is regarding the uh, structure of the capsule now so whenever the capsule is getting matured that is whenever the uh thika part the spore sac is filled with the spores now the cells of the epiphrem that is the rim they dry up it, that will get loose it will separate from the operculum region and the peristomial teeth will fall off and uh, the lid will open that is operculum will get open and uh, the spores whatever are there in the thika region the the spore sac the sac of the spore wall will open and all the spores they will just bust out of the capsule and they will disperse into the surrounding environment through the wind okay so the epiphrem peristomial teeth operculum it will plays a very important role in the dispersal of the spores if the spores are ready inside the spore sac if the peristomial teeth are not fallen off if the epiphrem is not getting dry up then if the operculum is not open the spores are not dispersed okay so they play a very important role in the dispersal of the seeds and the spores here in the polytrichum they are yellowish in color they are uninucleate and uh, and they play a very important role in the germination and these are spores in the favorable conditions when they fall on the suitable substratum they will germinate and result in the formation of a protonema so this protonema they develop and produce into a new moss plant now here this is the life cycle here you can see so this is a male plant this is the antheridial head and this is the female plant this is the archegonial head this archegonial head is enclosing the antheridium along with the paraphysis this is the antheridial head enclosing the archegonia with the paraphysis now the anthrozoites from here will enter into the archegonium fused with the egg cell form the zygote and zygote is developing into the next generation what we call it as a sporophyte so this is a sporophyte here the lowermost foot seta and this is a entire capsule region so this is a spore two spore sac the central columella you can look into this these are the peristomial teeth in two rows and this is a operculum the spores here they will dispersed out and here you can see polytrichum is a heterosporous that means they will develop two different types of spores so two spores will develop into the male uh, protonema another spores will develop into the female protonema the male protonema will develop into the male adult plant and the female protonema 
will develop into the female plant. So it shows heteromorphic alternation of generation. Gametophyte is different from the sporophyte. So this is regarding the writing part of the uh, life cycle. Anthridium, archegonium, spores, sporoegonium, capsule, spore mother cells, spores, and develop into a new plant. Okay. So the alternation of generation here in the polytrichum is called as heteromorphic alternation of generation. And remember, the spores are heterosporous type. Two spores will develop into male plant and two spores that develop into the female plant. So these two points are to be noted in the polytrichum. Heteromorphic alternation of generation and spores are of heterosporous type. So I'm just stop sharing here. So this is regarding the type study of polytrichum. The entire structure of polytrichum, it is uh, similar to the funeria. The only thing is difference lying in the anthridial head and the archegonial head. That's it. The capsule, the sporophyte, everything is same. Okay. So any questions here regarding this polytrichum? Please be free yes. to ask. Yes, my dear friends. Navya Madam Ji, Anusha Ji, Monica. Any, any yeah. doubts? Any doubts regarding this, please? Okay. Any point to be repeated? Good morning, Madam. All your, your yes, clear about this topic. Madam, please explain about the rhizome teas, steroids uh, and hydroids. Uh, these structures, madam. Rhizoids. Amelum. Rhizoids. 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 Here in polytrichum. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Rhizome here, just now I told you, na, rhizome is the underground part of the uh, gametophyte. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Amelum. 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 Mm, yes, ma'am. Yeah. That is the connecting tissue. Hydro and amylum. That is nothing but the connecting tissue. They act like xylem and phloem of the angiosperms. So mm -hmm. angiosperms lo manke the xylem will conduct. Hello. Yeah, ma'am. Listening. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Hydro mani di, These are the lowermost plants, right? There does not have any okay. vascular okay. tissue here. Hydro yes. plays a role of conducting water. Just like xylem. Whereas, okay, ma uh, whereas amylum or the, uh, we call it as the phloem tissue. It will conduct and leptum. Okay, they are the conducting tissues. Mm. Right. Okay, ma'am. Clear. Thank you. Right. Uh, still any more doubts? Okay. Madam, good morning, madam. Yeah, good morning, Navya. Uh, madam, paraphysis are peritherial leaves the same or different, madam? No, no. They both are different. Paraphysis are more filamentous cells. Parenchymatous filamentous cells. Cells will be arranged one above the other. Okay. okay. These are a part of anthridial initials. Maniki anthridial initial, archegonial initial, reproductive organs. Okay, madam. Okay. So, one of the degenerative cell, anthridial initial, one cell will become paraphysis. In the remaining cell become the functional reproductive organ. It can be anthridial or archegonia. Okay, madam. Paraphysis, good to Paraphysis are reproductive in origin. Whereas periketial leaves are more vegetative origin. Okay. Paraphysis okay, plays a role of protecting the reproductive organs. Okay, madam. We give you periketial leaves. Paraphysis, they will supply the moisture 
and also protection also they'll supply okay. the moisture to the reproductive organs and ipudu anthrodium nunchi anthrozoite bite ki raavali avi bite ki vachi vatiki moisture untene they can swim and reach the archegonium a moisture ni ekla supply avutundi only through paraphysis okay madam right they both okay, are different thank you madam right, thank you madam right must still any more doubts saraswati madam ji monoj ji okay all right thank you very much madam for regarding of this marconsia and uh, anthocyrus and polytrichum of this bryophyta so all of they are very enlightened about your class and also uh, please you continue the economic importance of bryophyta if possible otherwise please you start pteridophyta at tomorrow okay fine But tomorrow i'll start with pteridophyta right and then have the class of the uh, economic importance of bryophyta and pteridophyta together right. okay definitely yeah tomorrow yeah. we'll start with the pteridophytes right right thank you yeah thank, thank you. you so much